What's up guys, thanks for joining another episode of Cars, Bikes, and Coffee. I am Kurt, and we are on our second part of our series of teardown and rebuild of a Weber 3236 carburetor. If you haven't seen the first part, hit the link above. So let's get into it. So now that we're ready to reassemble the carburetor, what we need just on hand is just a little bit of oil. And what that's going to be for is for putting onto the shafts as they enter the body of the carburetor. So that's where we'll start. We will start by putting in the primary and secondary and using the primary shaft, which has the little end here. We're going to just put a little bit of oil where it does contact the carburetor body. Then we will grab that spring that has the larger gauge wire, slide that on, and that's going to sit right on that ear, the end of the spring. Grab this plated, looks like a top hat, that goes in to the spring. And we need a tiny spring. And then we just need one of the nylon collars. And the primary is the smaller opening. And we're just going to slide that through. And there is a hole for the spring, the large spring. You just want to make sure that collar gets in there. And then pushing the spring down into the hole while pushing forward. So that sits down in there. Then you'll take the other nylon collar, place that on the opposing end. And of course we have one more spring that we're gonna place. Just be careful it doesn't go flying across the room. Next we're going to grab the secondary shaft. We will oil that one as well. Not a lot. That will also need the tiny spring. And then of course a nylon collar. We'll take the carburetor body and slide that shaft through. And the other nylon collar goes on. And then the second tiny spring. Then you will want this piece. This is so it can open the secondary that will fit on to the key of the throttle shaft. Then we have the plated washer. Then the lock washer. And then the nut. And we're just going to finger tight this for now because we want to place in the throttle plates. So for doing the throttle plate, this will open this way, and you'll notice there is a marking of 78. We're going to keep that on the inside of the body. If you can pick up that 78 right here by my thumb. And you just keep it perpendicular to the body. And then once it goes in, we're going to get our screws, place those in, and we're going to just lightly tighten them. Now we did that finger tight, you want to make sure that the plate is fully closed, that there's no gaps showing on the sides. Once you have that, you can go ahead and tighten 
the bolts. Now once they're tight, you want to make sure that the throttle plate can spin and it doesn't get bound by the throttle opening. So we're going to go ahead and tighten this nut. For the primary throttle plate, we're going to go ahead and do that now before we place uh, the linkages just because they're a little bit more complex than the secondary. So we'll go ahead and do that in the same fashion, except in this case, the 78 goes on the inside as well. Now with having the large spring on the side, it will be a little harder to turn. But same process to install. I'm going to lightly fit it. Install the bolts. And check that the throttle plate has no gaps. Move it a few times. And you'll want to ensure that the, the tiny holes, if you can see them, there they are, that they are covered when the throttle plate is closed. So we're good. So we'll tighten those down. So now we're going to go ahead and work on the linkages on the primary. And we're going to just take our pieces as we laid them out. And the first one is a keyed slot, then a washer. And this piece, and you'll notice this piece sits loose. That's because we need to use this guy that has, it's like a washer, has a small end and a large end. So what we first need to do is add the pressure washer, which is this kind of bent looking washer. That is going to sit on the small end the small end is going to sit towards that last linkage that we just put and it's going to linkage is going to sit inside of that washer like so so push that down the next linkage this is going to connect the primary to the secondary and you'll notice this one is large as well that sits in here and has a key that sits into the secondary slot. And then the piece sits on this side of the other linkage. We have another washer. Then we actually have the throttle. Then we have a locking washer that has this flat end. You'll want to make sure this is as flat as you can get it before installing. And then we have the nut. And once it's hand tight, we just want to make sure that we have good working properties of the butterflies. So we'll go ahead and tighten this down. And then as well, we just wanna make sure it's not too tight, but that it also lines up flat with the locking washer so we can bend that over into the nut. And once you have that tightened down, you'll want to take just a small screwdriver and tap this washer up against the face of the nut. And once it is bent, then you can use a punch. And then finally, we want to take this spring that has two eyes and we're going to hang it off of this linkage and connect it to this linkage right here. Now that we have those linkages complete, we're going to move to the top and we want to put in our auxiliary venturis. And you'll note one side has a hole one doesn't and the side with the hole is going to sit towards the jets we're going to just slide those in doesn't matter which side this 
Sometimes one is easier than the other, just like the way they came out. If one is loose, like this one comes right out, you'll want to take a punch and very carefully just punch into the aluminum towards the Venturi to tighten it up. That's not going anywhere. So now we'll want to get our rebuild service kit out and I have it linked down below for the one that I am using. So now that we have our parts from our service kit, we're going to go ahead and start with the idle jets. And these are the ones with the O-rings and we're going to go ahead and replace those. And those should be in your kit. I'm just going to slide those on. The idle jets are marked with a number, and this one is a 55, so this idle jet is for the primary, which just to double check, there is our primary. So this side, so we're going to screw that in. Then we're going to flip this over and just always double check. This one says 50 which is for our secondary. And we're going to screw this one in. Now that our idle jets are in place, we're going to grab our emulsion tubes. These are the tall ones. One's going to be marked with F6, and the other one is going to be marked with F50. The F50, that one goes into our primary side, and that's going to slide in to there. And that makes F6 emulsion tube go in here. Now that the emulsion tubes are in, we have two others. The air jet, one is going to be marked 160 and the other is 165. The one marked 165, that goes into our primary, which we know is on this side. So we're just gonna put that on top of the emulsion tube. And then of course, place the 160 air jet into the secondary and just tighten those down. Now that the air jets are in place, we're going to move on to the main jets and the main jets are going to be down in the fuel bowl down here. Left side is going to be the 145 and the secondary will receive the 135. Now your jet sizes of all of these might be different if you're building for a different vehicle or a different engine. But these are what are running on the 240Z and tighten those down. With the main jets in place, now we want to place the accelerator pump jet and the delivery valve. And just a reminder, these have two copper, so it's a copper washer then this piece, and then another copper washer. That's going to be installed right here. Now that the jets are all finished, we want to install the power valve into the bottom of the fuel bowl. So we'll need the power valve and then the replacement washer, like so. and then tighten down. Now after the power valve is in, you'll want to grab this tiny little needle and he is going to sit right down in this location. Now we're gonna install the accelerator pump and we need to have this spring, which is gonna sit right in here. Then we have the new diaphragm which we want to make sure is clean. That's going to sit like so. And the base of the accelerator pump sits on the shaft plate from the throttle. And take our four screws, and just put them in place for now, and then tighten down the screws making sure that everything is sitting in the right position. And the bolts are going through 
the gasket of the diaphragm correctly. Now, if your unit had an automatic choke or water choke on your model, which would not be the DGV, it would be like the DGAV, then this would be the spot where you would want to install your choke. The Datsun is a manual choke, so we don't have to worry about that. Now we're going to move on to placing the linkages for the manual choke. So now we're going to install the linkage for our manual choke, and that is going to be sitting in this position. So we'll take this screw out. We will take our linkage. There's the tiny little nylon plastic washer, and that sits like so. Then we have a large spring that has a little foot. That's going to sit onto this part of the linkage. We take our screw, place through there, and you'll note the hole in the body that the spring end will sit in. Now we're going to focus on this portion of the linkage, and we're going to take that bolt out. This is the linkage we will need. We'll need the similar plastic nylon washer that will sit like so and then your remaining spring will sit with its foot like that place the screw in and the hole for the spring is right here once the spring is in and you'll want to go ahead and tighten that down. Then we're gonna use this part and you'll notice one end has like a key and the other has a hole. The key sits into this choke linkage. So we'll put that in first and then this will connect into this throttle linkage. And just by pulling up, we'll pop it in And then there is a tiny cotter pin once that's in go ahead and bend it around and finally we're going to install the cinch down point for the choke cable and that simply goes on the side of the throttle linkage put it like so And finally, for the body, we're going to install the idle mixture screw, which goes right below the choke. And we are going to tighten this all the way until it lightly seats. And then once we have that, we just back it out two full turns. And finally, the idle speed screw that's going to sit right behind the, the linkage the throttle. And we're just going to screw that in until it touches this part of the linkage. And we're going to set the body aside. So now we're going to move to the top of the carburetor. And what we want to do is grab our cleaned filter, place that in. And then our nut. Tighten that down. We're going to grab our new float needle valve and its washer. And that's going to be installed right here. And tighten that up. Then we're going to grab our power valve diaphragm. That's going to be placed right here. You can reuse the old bolts or use the supply depending on your service kit and just tighten those down. Now we grab the new needle for the valve, place that in. We take our float and the pin and we want to make sure that the tab of the float sits inside right here of the 
valve and then slide the pin to attach the floats like so. Now that we have the floats in place, what we want to do is adjust the closure. And so the best way to do that is to measure from the surface of the body to when it is fully closed. So you can see where the valve stops moving, right about there. In this case, we're using the brass, so we want to make sure that the valve closes 41 millimeters from the bottom of the bowl to the surface of the carburetor body. If you have the plastic bowls, you want it at 35 millimeters. Now, if yours is out of adjustment, then you would adjust this tab that the valve sits on, and you would bend it accordingly to get that right movement. So in our case, ours needs to be adjusted. So we're just gonna push very carefully down on the center while pulling the float bowls up, then testing and repeating until we see the 41 millimeters from the surface to the bottom of the bowl. Once you're happy with the settings on the float bowl, you're gonna take the lower body and we're gonna take our gasket. We're gonna place that on and then we're going to install the, the lid. And now we'll go ahead and put in the top bolts and as well the tag and the tag if you have that sits on the opposite side of the fill neck. So now to install the choke linkage, we're gonna grab the shaft and grab some oil. It's very light. Install that. Go ahead and place our plates in to line up the holes. In this case, we're going to be replacing bolts that we used prior. And the bolts that we we're using are M3s with a 0.5 pitch. What I want to do is just carefully while well, keeping pressure on the throttle plate to thread these in. And once you get the bolts tightened, you're gonna go ahead and find these two plastic pieces, one that has a hole in it, and that's gonna slide right into this spot right here. Doesn't matter which side, they're both the same. And then once that is in, you're gonna take this piece, and that's going to basically be kind of a cap and just make sure that is snug. Next, we'll grab this linkage, and we're just gonna feed it through this hole up here with the curved edge. Once that goes through, we'll feed it up. To that, it sits right into this slot. So. Then we take our cotter pin from our kit, feed it through, and then go ahead and bend it around. Once you have that in place, you're going to find this copper looking piece. That's gonna slide onto the end of that linkage that we just placed. And there is this tiny spring Then there is a plastic little hat. That fits right to the end of the linkage, like so. Then we place the tiny little washer at the end. and the little cotter pin, which is a locking, and that just slides on.
I can show it right there. So now we have a rebuilt carburetor. So we finished rebuilding the Weber 3236 carb. So next up, we're gonna be doing a full walk around and a drive of the 240Z. And then it's off to the 1974 260Z. So we're gonna be doing a full coverage of build on that one. That's gonna be off from rotisserie all the way to finish, possibly to auction. Fingers crossed. Thanks again for watching. If you do like what you see, consider subscribing. And thanks again to all our new subscribers. See you next time.